Welcome aboard the Caravel. The Caravel was an aircraft operated by the Swedish Air Force, but the mission was carried out by the Defense Intelligence Signal Intelligence Agency, FRA. And now we're about to enter the aircraft and check out all the operator's seats and also the cockpit. Let's go. So we just entered uh, the back of the aircraft and of course in the beginning of the back we have uh, some space for luggage and uh, stuff that we need to bring on to strap it safely here. Uh, on my uh, right hand side here we have a small pantry and of course a small toilet for the operators and the crew. But let's check out the heart of the aircraft which is the operator seat operated by the FRA people. Let's go! So in here we have old technology. I think everyone recognizes these old big screens. So here all the operators uh, sat, uh, sat and uh, watched over instruments uh, gathered by uh, data from the different antennas on the underbelly of the aircraft. Uh, what you were interested in is of course radio communications, uh, telecommunications, radar communications, all those kinds of signals. So those signals were uh, shown here and then the operators could manage and tweak uh, the recordings. And let's check out uh, the front of the aircraft where the Air Force crew operated it. Now we're in the front of the aircraft where the Air Force crew operated it, the flying of the aircraft, the navigation. And this is the navigator's seat. This was of course times before GPS technology. It was more of a map, compass, speed uh, calculation thing. Uh, other navigation was done either by flying uh, with the map or by using different kinds of radio beacons that were uh, placed out in different parts of uh, Sweden and, and the rest of uh, the world of course. But since most of the flying of this aircraft was done over the Baltic Sea near the Soviet Union borders, the international water borders, there was not much to look out to navigate so instead you needed to use the old trustworthy radio beacon navigation and of course uh, uh, dead reckoning calculations. So this was a full-time job for the flight navigator. He had his own seat here with maps. He also had the different instruments uh, regarding speed, uh, course, uh, heading and of course uh, height. And with that information he could calculate the aircraft's exact positions at all times. Which was very very important because they wanted to be close to the Soviet Union's international waters borders but not over the borders. Being over the borders on the wrong side could of course have catastrophic consequences. But let's go check out the cockpit where the pilot and the uh, pilot and the that's how many the oh pilot So in this front here we have two seats for the pilot and for the co-pilot and the third seat is for the uh, airborne mechanic who overwatches the different kind of engine instruments. He can also make simpler smaller repairs if need be in air. Uh, but the pilot and co-pilot seat, uh, everything is of course analog uh, and it's old 60s technologies. Uh, so it's uh, something you have to manually fly all the time. It's not uh, like... Uh, modern aircraft where you have digital displays or anything so everything is analog and everything is done by hand so it's a very manual job to fly these kinds of old 